welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you notice anything different, it's because I finally got some new glasses. <laughs> anyway, today's video is going to be about just taking better photos at theme parks. Um, last month I went down to Orlando, Florida and visited Universal Studios and Disney World and I had a lot of fun on the rides and eating the food and stuff, but I also just had a lot of fun taking photos. Um, as a photographer, I take a lot of photos pretty much no matter where I go. Um, so yeah, travel and photography, it goes hand in hand and it's great. And a lot of people might not think about doing a lot of photography at theme parks, but like why not? Especially Disney World and stuff, it's just so beautiful and just, you know, A plus to those Imagineers. <laughs> anyway, so if you are planning a trip to Disney World or Universal or any other kind of theme park that's kind of in that category of just having beautiful buildings and such, and you just wanna take some better photos while you're on vacation, and then this video is for you. So before I go into the tips, a couple disclaimers, so you know what you're getting into, I guess. This is going to be focused on taking photos just like of the theme park in general, the rides, attractions. Um, it's not gonna focus on taking portraits in the parks, or anything like that. So if you're wanting to take, you know, like artsy selfies or portraits of other people in the parks, this video isn't 100% focused on that. Although some of the tips could be used for that, I guess, but it's not the focus. And then also most of the tips can be used for just smartphone photography, but some of the other ones do focus more on like lenses and stuff as well, but most of them can be used for smartphones as well. So even if you don't have fancy camera gear, these are still good tips for you. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started. Tip number one is actually not gonna be about the photography itself, but just as a little tip for you, as you go into the parks, you're gonna go through security and especially at Disney World, I had a lot of issues. I just had a small camera bag, but um, of the five times I like went through security at the Disney parks, I got stopped four of those times for like an additional bag check. You just have to open your bag and they kind of just look inside. It takes, you know, 20 seconds or whatever, but it's still kind of annoying. But you know, just be prepared for that when you go into parks that have tighter security like Disney and Universal. Um, don't try to sneak in anything that you shouldn't, obviously, but but usually they just have the metal detector and you just walk through right into the park. Um, but yeah, I did get pulled aside a lot for a bag check. Tip number two is going to be, and this is probably the most important tip, is just to have patience. Um, yeah, it's gonna be crowded. Obviously, if you've ever been to Disney, there's gonna be a million people. And a big part of taking photos in theme parks is just waiting for people to walk by or to take their own photos and move on. So you really just have to have patience. Some of these other tips on the list will involve, you know, avoiding people, but sometimes there's nothing you can do except for just wait for them to move. So just be prepared for that. Obviously, if you're trying to do the most you can at Disney and stuff and ride as many rides as possible, you might not have a lot of time to stand around and wait for other people, which I totally understand. Um, but sometimes if you want to get the shot, it's just what you have to do. <laughs> okay, tip number three, and I know my fingernails are all different sizes. Just ignore that, I guess. <laughs> um, sorry. But tip number three is to just look up. That might be a really basic tip, definitely the most basic tip on the list. Um, it might not be th something you think about. Um, if you are on ground level, there's gonna be a ton of crowds right in front of you. But if you just tilt your camera up, just cut those people off and out of the frame. This especially works well with all the different castles at Disney World and all the other attractions that are just further up, like the buildings and stuff. And I think that is just a really easy tip. I don't know if you'll forget well, you're, you know, in the midst of taking photos to just look up. <laughs> Sorry, that tip was lame. Moving on. <laughs> okay, number four is to just find unique angles and maybe where there's less people, but it's still really pretty. This especially works like with the Disney castles that like right there, right in front, like where Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, the statue is, 
It's like the most popular spot for photos. So yeah, if you want to grab a photo there, you're probably going to have other people in your photo. There's no way to avoid that or wait for them to move. It's going to be a constant stream of people, especially since like the official Disney photographer is there as well. But if you just kind of walk around to either side, there's usually less people and just all around the castle or all around the park in general, just try to find unique angles and views where there's less people, but it's still a beautiful scene. And I mean, it just kind of helps you with that creative feel of doing photos and really helps you get your creativity out instead of taking the same generic photo as everyone else. Um, tip number five. This is probably my favorite tip for taking better photos in theme parks and that is to use foreground elements to kind of block out people. Um, this especially works well if there's like flowers or trees or maybe like a fountain or other aspect of like a building that you can use in the foreground to just kind of block people out. I mean, I'll have some examples up here, obviously. It's kind of hard to explain without seeing examples, I guess. But especially if you do a lower angle, so let's say like the castle's up here, but there's like a like flowers over here. You can take a lower angle and shoot up through the flowers or foliage or whatever and take a photo of the castle and then the, that foreground will like blur out and maybe block some of the people that are maybe walking by. So look at these photos, I guess. Um, tip number six is at the end of the day, you might not be able to avoid the people or use fancy techniques to get them out of your frame and you're just gonna have to edit them out of your photos. It sucks, but it is what it is. A lot of photo editing programs have a way to do that. Um, in Photoshop, it's really simple. I do have a full tutorial. I'll link up here how to edit out people in photos. Um, if you wanna just give that a little watch. Um, sometimes it may just be the top of someone's head at the bottom of the frame that you didn't notice, but you just gotta edit them out. Tip number seven is to look for details. Um, you don't have to take a big wide image of the theme park. Look for a little just details around the park. This is really good, especially at Disney and Universal. There's all sorts of little details that you can photograph, just like, you know, maybe a mural on a wall or part of a shop window display or just anything like that. There's all sorts of little details and it really helps to get the bigger picture of the theme park, you know, instead of focusing on just like the big main attractions and stuff, you know, you get a better like feel for the place, if that makes any sense. But yeah, it's always fun to look for those little details and kind of get photos of that kind of stuff. <laughs> My last tip, and this is the one that doesn't really relate to smartphones, but it's to use a fast lens. On my most recent Disney trip, I mostly used my 50 millimeter f1.8, which is really fast in low light. This is definitely the lens or a similar lens that you would want to use when photographing theme parks like in the evening or at night, or if you're in a store or riding on a dark ride because it's just so much faster. And you know, just crank that ISO up too if you need to. I usually just take my photos on auto if I'm shooting at night because I'm not really going for super artistic photos at that point. I just want something for my memories and it's just nice to be able to have a photo that's not blurry. So yeah, that lens in particular is really fast in low light situations and my camera in general has a really high ISO threshold so I can take photos that aren't blurry and are at least, you know, in focus, even if they are kind of noisy or maybe not the best photo in general, but they are still pretty good, especially if you're just looking for memories and not like something artsy. Obviously you're not gonna be carrying around a tripod while you're at Disney or wherever. So this is the next best thing. I did use my wide angle lens a little bit during this trip, but mostly I used that other lens. So yeah, it was really fast and nice. I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Those are my eight, I had to check, eight tips for taking better photos at theme parks. If you have any of your own tips, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe. I will have some more travel videos coming at you soon. And my next trip starts at the beginning of March. So sometime after that, I will have a lot more 
um, American travel videos for you. So if you are into travel, photography, travel photography, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.